Hi, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. In this video we are taking a look at an adapter that turns a SD memory card into an RDE hard drive that you can use with your old retro gaming computer. I was always aware of these adapters but in the past they cost quite a bit more so I usually recommended compact flash card adapters instead. The reason compact flash card adapters are cheaper is because compact flash cards are fully compatible with the RDE standard. SD cards however are not and the adapter needs to have a chip that does some translating between the SD card and the RDE interface. However now prices have come down. I purchased this SD memory card to RDE adapter from eBay for just 10 Australian dollars including shipping. SD memory cards are also very affordable and available. Where I live you simply cannot purchase compact flash cards in store. It is something that has to be ordered online. SD cards however are readily available at my local supermarket and post office. The type of SD card obviously affects performance. The SD cards I'm using in this video are all basic and affordable consumer devices. Nothing high end and expensive. The three cards I'm using is a Verbatim card with 8GB as well as two cards with 16GB, one no name card, the other one from Lexa. The machines I used to test these adapters include a Core 2, Pentium 3 and also a 386. I will show you how to connect the adapter and configure the BIOS. We will look at performance, especially write performance with small files, something that is important if you want to use SD memory cards to install Windows. I will also talk about compatibility. Does it work with another device on the same ID channel and anything else that I noticed while putting this adapter through its paces. This is what the adapter looks like. The chip on the adapter is from Syntechi and here is an image with all the details. We use a standard RDE ribbon cable to connect the adapter with the RDE port on the motherboard. The adapter does need power, just connect the standard Molex or the smaller floppy power connector. Insert a SD memory card and we are good to go. On most machines the adapter is detected and configured automatically and there's nothing else to do. You can also enter the BIOS and run the detection manually. This is what the BIOS options look like on a Pentium 3 as well as on the 386. Now we need to partition the SD card just like you would partition any RDE hard drive. The usual capacity limitations apply, for example the 386 could not go past 500 megabyte. To get around this you can just use dynamic drive overlay software. Here I am partitioning a 2 gigabyte SD card with easy drive which gets you around any capacity limitations that your system might have. So let's take a look at performance. For this I used a Core 2 system with plenty of RAM and Windows 7. Basically a machine that will show what the adapter can do without holding it back in any way. I ran ATDO Disk Benchmark as well as Crystal Disk Mark, both of which test read as well as write performance with small and large files. The first thing that stands out is we can see that the adapter maxes out at around 25 megabytes per second. Using a modern USB 3 card reader, these cards are capable of a lot more. However, if you're using a Pentium 3, which usually comes with an ATA33 interface anyway, this isn't really a big issue. What really impressed me however is the excellent performance with small files for both reading and writing. This used to be a real issue with compact flash memory cards I used in the past. Here we've got an image of a 4GB compact flash card for comparison. Take note of the much lower performance when it comes to small files. The adapter supports DMA mode of course. Note that under Windows 98 you need to enable this manually. Having used the adapter on a Pentium 3 with Windows 98, I'm very happy with the performance and can happily recommend the solution as a hard drive replacement. Ok, so the performance is good, what about compatibility? The adapter doesn't have a jumper to configure master and slave and sure enough I had issues when using a second drive on the same IDE channel. For some reason this only affected the Core 2 and the Pentium 3 system. On the 386, which only has a single IDE channel anyway, both the adapter as well as the optical drive worked without any issues. So it might depend a little bit on the system you're using, but there's a good chance that you have to use this adapter as a single device on the primary IDE channel and connect the optical drive to the secondary channel. And that's it for this video. To wrap it up, I'm very happy with this product. It is cheap, performs well, especially with small files which is important for Windows. SD memory cards are readily available and affordable. 
areas for improvement are the lack of master slave jumper as well as the transfer rate limit of around 25 megabytes per second. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Reddit, hit that like button and leave a comment down below.